it is Kim with Bloomer Home and Garden. Thanks so much for stopping back by the channel. Today we are starting in the kitchen garden and we are going to do a pre-season garden tour. There isn't a lot going on right now. We have some herbs that are coming back and a few things that have self-seeded or reseeded and we're going to look at what to do with those and the beauty of this is that we get to see the structure and the bones of the garden and what is working and what isn't working, what needs to be fixed, and all of these things that you can't see once the garden is planted and growing. So this is a benefit that we get to see from the beginning and I like to compare the before to the mid and after season. So if you're just coming along, this is a great time to start visiting the gardens here at the farmhouse. And if you are interested in, in gardening or homesteading, this is a great time for you to come along as well because you are getting to see uh, the structure, the layout, what works, what doesn't work, get some ideas and some inspiration from how I do things and how uh, the plants that I plant and how I do that. So this is a great time. This year I'm going to be faced with another challenge. I made a decision earlier this year that I would retire from doing massage therapy. I am a holistic wellness practitioner and a licensed massage therapist and I've been doing this for a number of years and this is physically demanding for the body and as some of you know in um, more of my earlier videos I talked about how I was born with arthritis and I've had a couple hip replacements already and a shoulder rebuild. I have arthritis in my spine and so um, the last few years I've had back-to-back -back surgeries and I've had to take a hiatus from doing anything physical and uh, the massage has really just uh, taken a, its toll and it's time to move on and I'm super excited to invest my time and energy into our homestead. Now um, I'm not going to have the extra finances that I normally would have in order to do these projects so I'm going to have to rely on just plain old creativity and frugality. And that is okay if you love creativity and frugality give this video a thumbs up and tell me down below some of the ways that you get creative and do your garden on a budget so we are going to be working with a shoestring budget this year and it is okay I am the queen of reduce reuse and recycle I uh, use as many resources as I can and I you know I tune into those Facebook marketplace estate sales uh, garage sales even those things that are sitting alongside the road because I am really passionate about saving our environment and not putting things in the trash if they are not trash yet and uh, passing those things on and being creative with them so I will be doing a number of those things this year so if you like that make sure you follow along I do have a couple major projects in the house and the barn that we absolutely have to do. There's a few out here in the garden and the patio that need to get done. So I will be doing those very frugally. So without further ado, let's get into this garden tour. Thanks so much for coming along guys. Please give it a thumbs up. This would be a great time to subscribe to our channel and help us boost our growth. Thank you guys so much. Let's dive in. Okay, well here we are in the kitchen garden again. I'm standing on our front porch. Now I am going to be featuring six of my seven gardens that I'm going to be concentrating on this year. And some of them are going to be a uh, big improvement. Some are just going to be just as I go. But I'm standing here on the back porch and I just want to show you where we are in conjunction to the house. So I'm just going to walk down the path and turn around. Now here we are. This is the back porch and we've just got this railing on. I haven't finished painting it yet and it was just open. I really like the farmy feel of having this this type of railing. But that is our kitchen window and you come out the back door and right into the garden. And Thomas Jefferson was an avid gardener and his best advice for the kitchen garden is to make sure your kitchen garden is going to be near your kitchen. And I found that to be true also. If you want to use the things in your kitchen garden, it should be by your kitchen. So I have some weeds in here to take care of and this box right here, this raised bed, uh, was a strawberry bed but the strawberries have grown out and they're growing all over and the soil in this bed for some reason has a lot of stones in it and the soil is real dry. So I kind of think that that soil needs to be changed out and worked on. 
So we have these six beds here that are three by five. And I'm pointing out now that these stones in the pathway kind of look like maybe I was drinking when I put them down. And seriously, guys, I was not. This is just from the frost and the heaval of the snow in the winter. So this long bed where Maggie is standing was added last year. And these herbs, I have herbs planted all around the, the borders. And these need to go because they kind of are in the way because that's not the end of the garden anymore. I found these three little guys and they are actually lamb's ear. I had a pot sitting here last year and they must have seeded themselves. This little mess here is an old dusty miller. Now, even though we live in the north and it's an annual, sometimes it comes back. And that one did for five years. Now, here I'm pointing out that the mulch is very thin, so we need to get some more mulch in here. And in several places that the plastic is showing through. And we need to cover that up. Now, I've got the lawn furniture out. It's not very well organized at the moment, so it looks kind of mishy-mashy, but that's the project. I love this little green set. It's three pieces. I actually got that at a garage sale for $10 last year. We have a little fire pit here in the patio, too, and we have a bigger one out back, but this is just a nice small one. And now I want to talk to you about that pile of bricks for a moment. Now, we live in 1860s brick farmhouse, and I love the heritage part of it. I love the history of the house. I love restoring it back to 1860s. And um, I've always said, why did they not leave the outhouse here when they pour things apart? Why did they take that out? I thought it'd be great to have the outhouse. So last fall, my daughter and her husband found this 1860s brick outhouse it was being given away for free you had to haul it away and so they brought it to me and I would like to put it back together and put it over here now we were hoping to get it in one piece but we couldn't so it'd be nice to have a little garden shed right there not a workable outhouse but a garden shed and have a few tools because most of my gardens are over here now this area over here was the pumpkin garden last year. I also had some potatoes in here and we grew some ginormous, probably eight pound sweet potatoes in here. And oh, they were so delicious. So I've got some tilling in here and I wanna add some, some good stuff to the soil. And um, this is a brief intermission. This is Maggie out here playing. I just love that I can be outdoors and have our girls with us all the time. It is so great and it's been just a long winter and so of course they love being outside. Back over here at the bench garden. Now this was on my tour last spring and I know it probably looks like I didn't do a lot. I have worked a lot in this garden. I'm still digging up lots of trash. Like I said, it must have been a trash heap at one time but it's coming along I've made a raised bed I've made a pathway through and I'm going to be focusing on uh, clearing up these trees there's a lot of suckers growing on them so I got to get those off this is all that's left of that ginormous rose bush that grows here by the entrance so that garden is going to be planted up next and this is along the side of the house and this looks a little rough, but this is it. This is what happens after a long winter. And all of these need to be cleaned up and cut back. Uh, I have a lot of salvia in here and some artemisia growing. And this also is the front of the house. And it too has that cottagey feel. And I just love it in the summer and going into fall when it's all in bloom. And uh, I saved the cutting back chores of this garden because everything out here needs to be divided. So I wanted to save that for a perennial dividing video. And there's some hostas in here. And these are a, they only get as tall as those little yellow lilies, but they are red and they are gorgeous. So I have some Rebucky in here. And of course I have some Autumn Joy Sedum coming back. And like I said, just a lot of tender loving care for this garden because I have to do this division. Uh, things were so big last year. So I want to get them cut back. And then I want to do some border control here uh, and just kind of come through the entire garden. And then I need to do some work on the front steps. 
and just finish this out and clean this up. It's going to look great. Now, the cottage garden, again, last year we had a lot of rain. A lot of weeds came back. But there are some plants in here. Um, we did have some beautiful sunflowers in here last year. I have the pathways marked out, and I'm going to be putting fabric down for those and maybe something to line them. I don't know if I'm going to go with wood or brick or stone. Comment down below what you would like to use if you were doing this garden. I would be glad to hear it. So, guys, that's going to wrap up this garden tour. I want to thank you all for coming along and just kind of looking at the bare bones of things and getting a gist of how things are going to play out this season. Give it a like and a subscribe. Everybody be blessed, be safe, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.